Okay, welcome back. Now I'm going to do a, a good demo. It's called the uh, electron to mass ratio of an electron, EF over M ratio of an electron. What well, we have this equipment right here. Uh, from the back here, the electrons are accelerated when I turn this on and then I heat the plates. The electrons are accelerated to a potential difference. So since the charge of the electron is negative, it wants to move towards the positive voltage side. So when I turn the voltage, the electrons are accelerated through that potential difference. So they lose potential energy, EV, and then that shows up as kinetic energy. They come out of here with a certain kinetic energy. So half mv squared, and then this is their electron charge, and this is the voltage difference of the two plates, right? And then so that means we can predict what the velocity in initial is of the electron as it enters the chamber. So over here, there, there's a chamber here that it's going to enter. And then over here, there's two uh, coil of wires, one on this side and one on this side, right? These are called Helmholtz coils. When I turn the electricity on, the current goes through there and it creates a magnetic field and it makes these electrons bend, right? And then I could measure, there's a little ruler in there, I can measure their radii. So the electrons come, actually the way that the elect, it, it works is that the electrons come out, come out vertically down. So it's kind of made like this so that the electrons are shot downward through the top of the plate like this. So they get accelerated and then they go down, right? And then the magnetic field is in this direction and it causes the electron to loop around like this. And then there's a ruler here provided so that we can measure their, the radius of their curvature, right? Uh, the radius of the circle that they make. So uh, what's going to happen? We, from this we can calculate their velocity of the electron. 2e times the voltage over m square root, right? Then when the electron enters the magnetic field, right, it experiences a uh, uh, force due to the uh, magnetic field. So the force of the magnetic field is the charge of the electron. Let's put the charge of the electron E times the velocity of the electron times the magnetic field. So I'm using this equation, F equals Q, V, cross product with B. And then the angle between the B and the V is perpendicular. So it's just going to be Q, V, B sine of 90, which is just going to be 1. So the electron charge times the velocity of the electron times the magnetic field. And then that's going to equal to the the force necessary for it to go in a circle. So it's going to equal the mass times the centripetal acceleration of the electron, which is equal to its velocity squared over the radius of its orbit, right? E times B times B, mass, velocity squared over the radius of the orbit. This velocity cancels this velocity, right? And I can say, okay, the radius of the orbit it makes is mass times velocity over EB. So let's see if this makes sense. The heavier the electron coming out, the heavier the particle coming out, right? And the faster it is moving, if it's heavy particle and it's moving very fast, it should have a bigger orbit, right? It should uh, be harder to, to make that electron turn, right? So that, that's the idea of this. The equation is making sense. The heavier it is, the faster it's moving, the harder it is to make it turn, and the radius should be large. Okay, if the magnetic field is weak, the magnetic field created by the Helmholtz coils, if the magnetic field is weak, that means it's low, that should also make the radius large, right? It should be hard to turn the, the particles. So that also makes sense. If the B field is weak, uh, now, how about if the charge of the electron is low? If the charge of the electron is low, that should also make the radius of its orbit large, right? So then I can take this equation and I can combine it with the, the equation for the velocity, the outgoing velocity of the electron when it's coming out right here, right? Then I can get a combined equation. So I can say the radius of the orbit is equal to mass over EB and then the velocity of the electron is equal to square root of two times its charge times its voltage over its mass. Okay? So we can kind of simplify this, take the m and the e and put it in the radical. Uh, we can say 1 over b square root of m goes in the radical becomes m squared and then e goes in the radical becomes e squared. 
And then the one of the M's cancels this M, the E cancels this E, then I get here the radius of the orbit, one over the B, square root of 2MV over E, right? And where V is the voltage, right? So what does this mean? One of the ways we can use this experiment is to see if these uh, equations are true, right? What I can uh, look here is if I increase the magnetic field, like let's say if I double the magnetic field, right? The radius of the orbit should go by should go down by half. So double the magnetic field, then the radius should go to half of the, its radius, right? So if I triple the magnetic field, the radius should go down by one third, right? So there should be basically like an inverse relationship. Okay, how about the relationship of R to the voltage? If I double the voltage uh, of the source of the plates, what should happen to the radius? If I double the voltage, the radius should go up by a factor of square root of two, right? Double the voltage. The radius should go to square root of two R. Right, because there's a square root relationship here. How about if I quadruple the voltage? Quadruple the voltage. Okay, so then what should happen? If, I, if this goes up by a factor of four, and then I'm taking square root of four, that means the radius of the orbit doubles. So the radius of the orbit becomes double. So for the voltage, it's a square root relationship. I'm gonna have to quadruple it in order to get double the radius. But for magnetic field, if I double the magnetic field, the radius goes down by a half. So what's the equation for the magnetic field of these coils? Well, in the book, it tells us that the magnetic field of the coil is linearly proportional to the current going through the coil, right? The equation for it is the magnetic field of the coil is equal to, um, it's gonna be mu zero, the number of turns of coil times the current, right, divided by the, the radius of the coil, the radius of the coil times this factor four fifths to the three halves power. For, so when you calculate all of that, they also told us what the radius of the, what the radius of these coils is from here all the way to the center. They told us that the radius is approximately uh, 0 0.1475, 0 0.1475 meters. That's not the radius of the, the electron orbit, it's the radius of the coils, right? So they calculated the, the they gave us the radius of the orbit, and then mu zero is the magnetic permeability, four pi times 10 to the minus seven. When you compute all of that, you get this result. The magnetic field is equal to 0 0.80 milliteslas times the current. So you see, notice that the magnetic field is proportional to the current. 0 0.80 millitesla times the current. So if I double the current running through these coils, then I double the magnetic field. But if I double the magnetic field, the radius should go by half. So let's see if that rule will work. I'm gonna double the current, right? And then the magnetic field will double and the radius should go down by a half. So let's see if that works. So let's first turn this on. So you can see here I made the voltage 124 volts and the current 1.8 amps, right? And then here the diameter of the orbit is going to read, I made it so that it reads a whole number. And when it reads a whole number, these numbers light up. So you can see here, this is, uh, I have closer to five. You see how I'm past five now? Right here, all right, I'm, I'm on five, exactly. That's the most lit. If I increase it a little bit more, it's getting to the left of five. Uh, it's getting to the uh, smaller than five. So then right there is when it's most lit. Okay, so I have now 1.79 uh, amps and 124 volts. So if I double the current, the magnetic field will double, the radius will half, right? If I half the current, so the radius should go up by a factor of two. So let's go half the current because if I double the current, I won't be able to read the readings. 
because on the radius is already small. So I'm gonna make the current half of this. That's gonna be 0 0.9, 0 0.88, something like that. Go down to 0 0.9, 0 0.88. The diameter is now nine and a half centimeters. It should actually be 10, but for some reason it is not. It should have doubled, 0.88. So if, if I go to 0.86, right now I am doubled. So you see the diameter is about 10 right now. So this is 0.83, which is not quite half of 1.79. So you could do this over and over again, see if there's this inverse relationship. I'm almost there, but it's not quite half. So uh, it was the original current was 1.79, and uh, the current now is 0.83, uh, okay? And so it's not quite half of it, but the radius has doubled, okay? So let's go to the 1.79 value again, all right? Now I'm gonna... Uh, change the voltage, right? If I increase the voltage by twofold, make it 248, two forty eight. The radius should go up by square root of two. And the diameter should go up by square root of two, right? So if you multiply five centimeters by 1.414 square root of 2 is 1.414 that's going to give you about um 7.0 so you can see here it's a little bit over seven so the square root relationship is working so if i now quadruple the voltage the original voltage was 124 so i doubled it and then i double it again so that's going to be 496 Okay, so about something like 495, 496. You, the, now the radius of the orbit should have doubled, okay, approximately. A bit past 10, about 10.3 or 10.4. So the di original diameter was 5, and now it's a little past 10, 10.4. So it didn't quite double it, more than doubled, but you can see that the quadruple relationship is working more or less, right? If I quadruple the voltage, then the radius is doubling or a little bit more than doubling. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this as an experimental way to calculate the electric charge over mass ratio of the electron. So let's go back to our original data. Okay, so my original data was 124 volts, 1.79 amps, and the diameter was five centimeters. So using that, let's calculate the electron to mass ratio of the electron. Okay, so now I have the voltage, 124 volts, the current is 1.79 amps, the diameter of the circle 5.0 centimeters, and then, uh, I'm told that the magnetic field is linearly proportional to the current 0.8 milliteslas. So now I'm gonna take my equation that I had, the radius and relationship with the magnetic field, but instead of calculating for the radius, since I've already measured the radius, I'm gonna cross multiply this RB square this, r squared b squared, right? Then I'm gonna have two m b over e. Then I'm gonna calculate e over m. This is called the e over m ratio of the electron. This is a very important uh, number in classical physics, right? In modern physics. So it's the charge of the electron over the mass of the electron. So that's gonna be equal to uh, two b over r squared b squared, right? So let's see what number we get from there, okay? E over M, two times the voltage, 124 volts, okay, divided by the radius squared. So take half of this, the radius is 2.5 centimeters, but change it to meters, 0.025 meters, and then square that. And then the magnetic field is going to be 0.8 millitesla, so point, that's going to be 0.0008i, right? So you're going to move the milli means 10 to the minus three, so move this decimal three places to the left. One, two, three, point zero zero eight I. So then you're gonna do point zero zero eight, and then the current times the uh, current, which is gonna be 
uh, times 1.79 and then square that quantity. So square this, square this, and then multiply it by that, and then that's going to give you the charge to mass ratio of the electron. So let's see what result we get. Okay, I need, um, I need actually one more zero here. 0.0008, okay? Experimental result, 1.935. The actual result for the charge to mass ratio of the electron, you can divide the charge of an electron by the mass of the electron. Charge of the electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. You divide that by the mass of the electron, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So this is in units of coulombs per kilogram. So very important number in physics. Okay, so I'm in the ballpark, 1.935, 1.756, right? So then my percent error is gonna be pretty close. My percent error, 100% times 1.935 is the result I got. Since they're both 10 to the power 11, I don't need to use that. Then I subtract 1.756, divide it by 1.756, right? Uh, you would do many, many multiples of um, uh, current and voltage. You would keep changing the voltage, you would keep changing the current, and you would get an average value for the radius. An average value for the voltage, an average value for the current, an average value for the uh, radius, and use all of that average. So there's human reading error, so you can kind of try to average that out, and you'll get even a better result. You can do this for any particle. This is how particle accelerators work. If there was an unknown particle there coming out from the tube, right, and I didn't know its charge to mass ratio, I would do a similar experiment, uh, bend that beam, and I have no idea what it is, calculate its charge to mass ratio, then I will have a measurement of its charge to mass ratio, and then I can do other different experiments to find out its charge separately, or its mass separately, and then once I have its charge to mass ratio, I can calculate the other quantity, right? So these are how particle accelerators work. We bombard particles very, very, at very, very fast speeds against each other, and new particles come out, and then they go into a bubble chamber similar to this, and that bubble chamber has a very strong magnetic field. That magnetic field curves these uh, um, beams of particles, but we don't know what the particles are. We measure the radius of their orbit, and from the radius of their orbit, we can do a similar calculation, calculate their charge to mass ratio, right? So now you can see a very important tool for doing some analysis on particle mass and charge, okay? Thank you very much.